Hey there, this is InfoShare. There's a lot of buzz about low-code development platforms, and what's appealing about them is that they allow developers and non-developers to create solutions without all the ground-up coding effort. There are lots of companies out there in the space like Mendix and OutSystems, Apian and Microsoft, and they all offer different products that approach low-code in slightly different ways. What I wanted to do in this video is focus on Microsoft and their Power Apps product. Now, if you're already in Microsoft shop, Power Apps is probably going to be the first thing that you consider if you're looking at low code. It's already part of the Microsoft Power Platform, and that includes capabilities for automation, data visualization, and development. So let's go ahead and dig in and look at why you might want to use Power Apps and some of the reasons why you may not want to. So first off, like I mentioned before, if you already use Microsoft products, Power Apps may be a good fit. Some Microsoft 365 licenses include Power Apps at no additional cost, and you can use those licenses with Power Apps to build simple solutions. This method could be perfect for some basic or intermediate development needs. Now, just because you can, it doesn't mean you do. And what I mean by that is that certain solutions should not be built using this approach. Now, I'm not gonna get into those details in this video, but you can't ignore the value proposition that Microsoft provides by providing the Power Apps capability within a Microsoft 365 license. Now, not specific to the low-code technology, but you always want to consider how many vendors you have to manage at your company. And if you're a Microsoft shop, lighting up Power Apps is a no-brainer. In the scenario where you already use Microsoft, you won't have the typical formalities of a new vendor. Any due diligence you've probably performed on the Microsoft Cloud Platform can already be taken into account for Power Apps. So using Microsoft might be a great strategy to help minimize your vendor sprawl. Now that's assuming that the technology meets your needs. While we're talking about Microsoft, we should take a step back and look at Microsoft's commitment to the low code space. So the fact is that Microsoft is behind the other leading competitors. And I'll get to, into that in a little bit um, and we'll talk about that, but they are trying to move forward quickly. So from a macro level, Microsoft is all in, and you don't need to worry too much about their long-term commitment to the low-code space. With other vendors, you may run the risk of things like buyouts and product retirements. You're unlikely to see that with Microsoft, and if anything, they'll be buying others. But then the next few areas I wanna bring up are not technical, but I do think they're important when considering a low-code vendor. So those areas include things like professional services and support, the user community, and training. Look, I know that tech is important, and getting the low-code technology right is critical to your low-code decision. But these three areas are worth considering, and Microsoft is strong in all of them. In the professional services space, there's a vast partner network of Power Apps consultants. If you need someone to help you build a solution or support an existing one, you're going to find a Microsoft partner uh, through the network. It's wide, it's deep, and from a community perspective, Microsoft's forums are very active, and Microsoft's MVPs are constantly engaged along with other users in the community with providing peer-based you know, peer feedback and support. You know, there are also a number of user groups around the country that meet to talk about Power Apps and the Power Platform. And finally, there's training another really important component to any solution that you're investing in. And in this area, Microsoft has made significant investments in building out quality training content available at no cost. So all of these things are really important when selecting a low-code en en um, environment and vendor, and Microsoft brings a lot to the table. So on the technology side, one of the highlights to working with Power Apps is the vast amount of integration points and this is available through what Microsoft calls connectors. There's a huge variety of connectors available from hundreds of vendors, um, and they, they provide data integration. And in a number of other systems that you look at, these integrations need to be built out. But with Microsoft, there's a rich set of connectors available to various platforms, and the number of vendors participating in the connector program is growing all the time and a great component overall to the Power Apps platform. Now, when it comes to development, the web-based Power Apps interface is fairly easy to use. You get multiple environments for supporting things like prod, test, dev, and various data sources can be leveraged like SQL or Dataverse. 
So all these things I just mentioned can make a pretty strong case why Microsoft might be a good fit for low code. However, there are some areas to consider that might give you some pause and I wanna review those. One of those areas is product immaturity. And the fact is Microsoft is behind the competitors in low code. They're catching up, but there are some areas where using Power Apps can be frustrating. And the shortcomings in the product don't feel like they're addressed fast enough. For Microsoft to catch up to their peers, they're gonna to need to iterate at a faster pace and over time they'll get there. And development is in the company's DNA. But in the short term, the shortcomings can be pretty frustrating. So, and for example, many of Microsoft's competitors provide a wide variety of templates to speed up the build process. But Microsoft offers just a very limited set of things like sample screens to build from. From a cost perspective, you really need to dig in and understand how your organization plans on rolling out Power Apps and the various solutions to know how the licensing is gonna work for you. Their newer um, per app and per user licensing can be confusing at first. And going Microsoft isn't necessarily gonna save you money compared to peers. They're priced in the marketplace relative to the peers and it may not make sense for you financially compared to the, some, of the, some of the other offerings. In some use cases, it can be more expensive than peers. And when it comes to workflow and automation with Power Apps, you need to leverage Power Automate. A lot of workflow-based automation leverages things like approval tasks to individuals, and with Automate, their approval actions lack things like the ability to um, set a trigger for a reminder. You need to build reminders into your workflow solutions. So things like that can get a little bit frustrating, and you actually can't believe that they aren't even there in the first place. So the point of this video is to talk about the various things to consider when looking at Power Apps as a low-code solution. We covered both technical and non-technical areas to try to look at the overall offering. And here are a few of my thoughts at the time of recording this video. If you're not a Microsoft shop, definitely look elsewhere for a low-code platform. There are far better solutions right now. If you are a Microsoft shop and you're already using a low-code product today and you're happy with it, I don't think it's worth switching at this point. If you are a Microsoft shop and either don't like your current low code um, platform or you're looking to get started with low code, then I think you have a difficult decision ahead of you. While technically the product isn't quite yet where it needs to be, I believe it will get there. And from a non-technical perspective, the things we talked about and all those considerations for things like vendor management, the community, uh, those are all really valuable. Well, that's my take. If you have any comments on Power Apps or low code that you wanna share with people, please put those in the comments below. And if you like this video, please like it and subscribe. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.